It's been over 10 years since we've had the KTM 390 engine and the Pulsar NS200 chassis and those elements have finally come together to make this the Bajaj Pulsar NS400 and interestingly this is called the NS400Z. We'll come back to that in a bit. But effectively, this is an NS200 chassis with a 373cc engine from the Dominar. There is a lot more to this bike than that and first of all, let's talk about the way it looks. Now, the silhouette is NS200 but when you look at it from every angle, there are unique elements here. For example, the face. It has a really interesting headlamp with a lightning bolt LED DRL that goes right up the side. And believe me, when you see this on the road, you will identify that you're looking at an NS400. Further back, you've got the same fuel tank as the NS200, but the extensions here are different and it has much bigger radiator shrouds with a little floating element. Much nicer look there. Similar story with the tail section. It is a little different. The plastic paneling along here is different. This section is different. There's a small little vent sort of theme out here. That looks nice as well. What's the same is the grab handles, the tail lamp, and this neat little number plate holder. All right, so that's the visual element. The display, the NS400 also gets a new LCD. Now, Bajaj has been updating its entire range with new displays. This, though, is a unique display to the NS400. It is an LCD, but there's some color elements here. You'll see them in the fuel gauge and in the rev counter. There's also a little separate display out here where you'll get things like your Bluetooth uh, assist and your navigation assist, etc. Uh, speaking of technology, this bike has ride-by-wire, which the Domina does not get. That has enabled Bajaj to give it four different riding modes. Uh, road, off-road, eco, if I'm not wrong. Uh, four modes in total, we'll add them at the bottom. Ride-by-wire lets Bajaj tune this engine quite differently for each riding mode. It also has switchable traction control and dual-channel ABS. Now, as far as we understand, the dual-channel ABS cannot be turned off even in off-road mode. It will reduce the intervention, but you can't turn it off fully. Now, the engine, same 40 horsepower and 35 newton meters as the Dominar 400. The mapping will be different though. Bajaj says that this engine is tuned to be more aggressive, more sporty, and it goes back to the underbelly exhaust that came out in the 390 Duke all the way back in 2013. So the Dominar has an exhaust along the side, this has an underbelly exhaust, and this is what it sounds like. In case you're wondering, it's not really like the old KTM. Uh, it's more like the Dominar, a little different, but more towards a Dominar sort of sound. Right, now the other big thing that's really exciting here is that this bike is a lot lighter than a Dominar. 174 kgs, which makes it 19 kilos lighter, and that should turn this into a completely different sort of bike to ride. Riding position will be very similar to the NS200. It's a spacious motorcycle. Seat height is about 807 mm, if I'm not wrong, so not really tall, not super short either. Most people will fit on this bike, including tall riders. And it's a nice view forward. The fuel tank looks good, slight lean forward, familiar and quite nice. Now, before we move on, I should talk about the suspension and the brakes. The components are the same as the Dominar, which means you get a nice chunky 43mm fork. It's a fatter fork than the NS200, finished in gold here, looks very nice. The shock also is similar to the Dominar, but Bajaj tells us that the tuning is completely different, more for a street naked motorcycle, and it has to be different because of how much lighter this bike is. As for the brakes, it's a 320mm rotor with those Grimeca brakes that we saw on the New Age Pulsars, the N250. 320 in the front and I think 230 at the rear if I'm not wrong. Tire size is 110 in the front and 140 in the rear. So this is not a 150 section tire like you'll get on the KTMs. It is a radial at the back, but it's not radial in the front. Finally, the one change that's happening with the engine compared to the Dominar uh, in terms of power drivetrain is that the rear sprocket is one tooth larger on this bike, which will give it a little more acceleration. Bajaj claims a top speed of 154 kph, but I wouldn't be surprised if you see a higher number on the speedo. Well, that is the NS400. How much does it cost? Well, that's the sweet surprise of the day. It's 1.85 lakhs X showroom introductory. We don't know how long for, but that's a really good price. It's uh, not much higher than the NS200, which is nearly 1.6 lakhs. Uh, only 35,000 rupees more than the N250. You're getting a lot of motorcycle here. This is a really good value for money package. Finally, this is called the NS400Z. What does that mean? Do we get another variant, the NS400R, or do we get a base NS400 that's even more affordable than this? I don't really know. Let us know what you think.
Before we go though, we will be riding this bike very soon. Our reviews come out on the 11th of May and that's when we'll tell you all the details. I haven't gone into the nitty gritty things. There are some small details in the chassis, in the swing arm. You'll get all the information there. So look out for that review.